Good morning. Good morning. And welcome everyone to worship this morning on the Sunday that we we honor and remember the baptism of our Lord. And so you'll see that the Christ candle is lighted today too. So we are um, honoring the baptism of Jesus. I would ask that you take the pew pads that you find along your center aisle and fill, the, fill your names out in those and pass them down so that your neighbors next to you can do the same thing. Um, a couple of no announcements that I need to, to let you know. Um, unfortunately, Gary Salisbury is no longer with us. So we remember the family um, as they mourn his death. He gave it his all. He did. He really worked hard and it just didn't happen. So we give, give our, our prayers to the family. His visitation will be um, tomorrow afternoon from 4 to 8 p.m at Russ Heitner Funeral Home. And then his uh, funeral service will be on Tuesday morning here at Good Shepherd um, at 10.30. So um, please be aware of the fact that, that they are in need of our prayers. Please stand for the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to page 94 as we join together in our confession and forgiveness. We will be using the words on the right hand columns. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all <coughs> desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now silently confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Before we begin, and if you choose to turn around and look. I checked in the Bible. There's nothing that says you can't turn around and look. So um, just a, a word to you about the liturgy. We're going to be starting a new liturgy today in place of setting 10, which we've been using since last June. We'll be using setting three. Setting three is page 138 in the front of your Lutheran Book of Worship. I we chose this because we wanted something familiar um, to use during uh, for the uh, anniversary service. So I, this is going to feel, I think, like a pair of comfortable shoes. You're you're used to it. We have used it before. Um, for those who you know get a little confused about getting this page back and this page back, if you look in your pew. There are six bookmarks in every pew, so if you want to just take a bookmark and put it in there, you're ready to go for the gospel response later on in the service. We'll begin with the Kyrie. And I've asked, been asked not to sing the part. <clears throat> in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, for all who suffer or offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. join in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit 
faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns <coughs> one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This time we'll have a choir anthem, When Jesus Came to Jordan, by the adult choir. This morning's scripture will be read by Isla Teske. The first lesson is from Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. Near the end of Israel's exile in Babylon, God promises to bring them home. They no longer be afraid because the one who formed, created, called them by name, now redeems them from all their enemies. God declares them precious and honored, and God loves them. Here is the lesson. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overcome you. Then you will walk through fire, and you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The second lesson is from Acts 8, 14 through 17. Peter and John are sent in support of new Christians in Samaria, a group that was recently baptized after hearing the good news of Christ through the preaching of Philip. Here the Samaritans received the gift of the Holy Spirit in the laying on of hands. 
Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Here ends the lessons. Thank you, Isla. At this time, would you please rise for the gospel acclamation, which is found in the front of the red hymnal, page 142. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. The, the second chapter, third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not even worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated and I would invite the children to come forward for a children's message. A small but mighty crowd, huh? Anybody else want to join us? There is no age restriction. Okay. A few weeks ago, we celebrated a birthday here at the church. Do you remember whose birthday that was? Jesus' birthday. Very good. It was Jesus' birthday. And what happened at Christmas? Whose birthday? Go ahead. God and Jesus, yeah. Well, last week we had another celebration. We saw some people or heard about some people who had traveled this long, long distance to tell the world how special that Jesus was. Anybody might know who those three people were? We three Kings, very good. Those were the three kings, and they traveled a long distance just so they could come and meet Jesus. Do you think you would like to meet Jesus face to face? Yeah, I would too. That would be special. Well, today we, hear, uh, we heard a Bible story about Jesus' baptism when God spoke from heaven to tell us that Jesus was indeed very special, like we already know. In our baptism, God says each one of us are special too. What do you know about baptism? Anybody know anything about baptism? What happens in baptism? You know what? I'll give you some reminders. You want to come with me? We'll go over here and we'll see what we find. Somebody? What do you see in there? 
water. Yes. It is just water. You have nailed it on the head. It is not any special water. But what makes it special is that in your baptisms, and you were all baptized, I remember that, that, um, that you were able to, to have that water put on your forehead and also on the top of your head. And that meant that you were baptized. And when we are baptized, what that means is we belong to God. We are all God's children. You all have parents, that I know. But we also all have a parent in God. God is very special to us. God cares for us. God loves us. Even on the days that we might be a little bit grumpy, God still loves us. So just to remind you that you are God's special child and that you were baptized, I'm just going to give a little spritzer of water. Anybody want a little water on their head? If you do, just raise your hand. No? Okay. <laughs> it's just water. Anybody else want some? No? Would you like some, Liam? No? Would you like some? No. Okay. <laughs> You were the brave guy today. <laughs> well, everyone can at least dip their finger in the water. I'm going to take this bowl down, and this is just plain, regular water. There's nothing special about it. It's just plain water. And if you want, you can dip your finger in it and then mark the sign of the cross on your forehead. You want to mark a cross? There you go. Yeah, great. And so that's why we are calling this the baptism of our Lord Sunday, because we remember that even Jesus was baptized. Isn't that interesting? Thank you so much for coming up. It's good to have you here today. they remember the baptism part as well as the water. <laughs> Today in the reading from Isaiah, we hear the prophet's words tell of a different type of citizenship, that of being part of God's kingdom. But this nationality is different than the citizenship of any country that you would ever enter. For this is free. There is no test that you have to take to see if you are smart enough to get into the country. You have no need to prove your worthiness. So hear God's words. I have called you by name, and you are mine. How is it that we are God's children? It's only through creation. God created each one of us in the first place. God formed us in a womb, and now God does something new that includes each one of us here. You see, in baptism, we become God's own when we are marked with that sign of the cross that the kids just did on their forehead. God calls us by name, and names are so very powerful. God knows that. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we know that too. Think of how much it means when someone looks you directly in the eye and calls you by name. You feel far more valued as an individual than if they were to say, Hey you! Regardless of who we are, our names give us some identity. A few years ago, when I was visiting the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C., I watched as people quietly and very respectfully read and touched the names engraved in the marble. 
Sometimes tears were shed or flowers dropped to the ground in front of the name. But it was that name that seemed to be so important. You see, this name was a man or a woman lost in the conflict and her or his memory will not ever be forgotten. Yes, our names give us identity too. And along with that, along with that name comes some responsibility. Perhaps you may recall hearing the words of your parents warning you to behave appropriately now so as not to offend our family name. For you see, along with the family name, one received honor as well as some responsibility. Names are important. God does create us, and God calls each one of us by name. But it doesn't stop there. Hear God's promises. When you are in over your head, I'll be there with you. When the waters get rough, you will not go down. When you are stuck between a rock and a hard place, I'll find a way out for you, God says. God joins us in our personal exiles and raises us up out of our brokenness as well as our powerlessness. God who created us to be in relationship with him does not leave us alone in our loneliness. God continues to hang in there with us. And when we throw up our arms in despair and shout, God, life is too hard for me. I just can't go on. God is there to tell us that we are not alone. It is pure gift to be God's child, to hear that we are loved and appreciated, that God individually knows who we are and cares about our well-being, to know that God will always be with us, to realize that we are precious in his sight. This gift of God claiming and caring for us gives us life in our culture of death, wholeness in our broken world, and courage when we feel that, like we are in the face of fear. In today's gospel reading, Jesus is baptized right along with all of the other people that were present that day. He didn't see any any reason to single himself out and say, I am special. But then as Jesus prays, we hear God's words through a voice. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus was human and divine, and he comes to walk on earth to carry out God's ministry and to teach all people of all times. And it is through Jesus' death and resurrection that we do have life with God that will never end. Now all people, having been created by God, are children of God. But we as Christians go beyond that by joining ourselves to Jesus through our baptism, like we just saw today. Baptism is a gift that we do not merit. Rather, it is a moment when we are blessed with the forgiveness of sins, when we are sealed with that Holy Spirit, and we are marked with the cross of Christ forever. Now, baptism is not any kind of insurance policy, nor is it like joining a club, say a Jesus club. Baptism begins a lifelong journey in which we follow Jesus. And that following of Jesus becomes our way of life. Baptism does not grant you an easy life or a get out of jail free card when the going gets tough. Remember, 
you are joined to Christ in his death as well as in his resurrection. The way of the cross is not strewn with rose petals on the ground, but it is the way of life that Jesus calls us to. And at the same time, we receive the promise of the resurrection, a promise of eternal hope. Martin Luther, aware of sinful human nature, and perhaps also knowing how forgetful we might become, suggested that we remember our gift of baptism each and every day. So, at the beginning of each day, ask God for forgiveness for your sins, and then as you wash your face in the morning or take a shower, remember the waters of baptism that were washed over you in your baptism and joined you to Christ. Remember whose you are. You are God's son or daughter. In the movie Lion King, Simba, like us, shows his need for remembering who he is. That little funny baboon, Rafiki, invites Simba to a lagoon to see his deceased father. By seeing a reflection of himself as he looks into the water, he challenges Rafiki, saying, That's not my father, that is me. And Rafiki says, Look a little harder. He lives in you. When Simba looks again, this time he hears the voice of his father saying, Simba, you have forgotten who you are. Remember who each one of you are today. God whispers in your ear, you are mine. Yes, we do need reminders of who we are. We are children of God, joined to Jesus in our baptism. Because of our forgetfulness, physical reminders are helpful. And that is why in some churches, Lutheran churches included, place their baptismal fonts at the entry to the worship space so that as worshipers enter into the church, they are reminded of their baptism. Seeing these baptismal waters, they recall who they are, children of God, baptized in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear God's words today. They will help you remember who you are and help you remember whose you are. God says, fear not, for I am with you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Amen. The hymn of the month is in the front of, or in your ELW, hymn number 715. When we, on worship and music, choose a hymn of the month, we sometimes struggle because we want to pick something that's not familiar, whereas most people would like to sing something that's familiar. So we, we think this is a learning process, and so that's why we pick one that's not necessarily familiar. The one in front of you today is, is picked because of the season. We're in the season of Epiphany, and the word we most often use in the season of Epiphany is light. So the hymn was chosen for its words. The, the words are very powerful. We ask that you give it a try. We're not concerned if you hit all the right notes, even Gary. Um, we want you to pay attention to the words, and, and, the, and the notes will come as we progress through the month. So um, 715 in the yell dummy. I'll play it through once. Please stand.
At this time, we will do the Apostles' Creed in unison. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will have the offering, giving back a portion of what God has given us. And later, the offertory response will be ELW 686, verses 1 and 4, and you may remain seated. seated or kneel for the prayers of the church. Called by the Holy Spirit into relationship with a loving God, we pray for the church, all in need, and the whole creation. We are thankful for all engaged with the spreading of the news of Jesus. We especially remember our companion synods in Bogota, Colombia, and the Central Diocese in Tanzania. <clears throat> Those who worship in Kinambeo Lutheran in Tanzania and the willingness of our missionaries, the Lostrums, to serve when they are called, where they are called. Lord, in your mercy, bless your people with peace by raising leaders to serve with mercy and justice. Let the world praise your glory and strength by putting down the weapons of war. We ask your safety for those who serve in the military, including J.B. Wilner, Mike Kaufman, Jared Detloff, Josh Hansen, Danielle Hipper, Logan Maticola, Jared Billings, Brandon Ressler, Alex Raymaker, Kevin Stern, Mitch Meyer, Eric Trepto, Joshua Kaufman, Mike Mall, Mike Mall Keith Latterell. Lord, in your mercy, God of life, call your church on earth to bring the good news of redemption to all your beloved children throughout a hurting, 
and broken world. Call us to restore rivers and seas, ponds and creeks to the beauty and clarity you gave them. Lord, in your mercy, <coughs> comfort all your cherished sons and daughters. Call us to aid those who suffer especially, Shannon Royce, Jan Helfritz, Stu Fullerton, John Musser, Bill Niebuhr, Sabrina Bushlock, Carolyn Tauchi, Dave Talamatez, Arnold Carlson, and those we name silently in our hearts. Bring them hope that your redemption is drawing near. Lord, in your mercy. Bring to your table all who hunger and thirst for you. Help us to share our bread with a hungry world. Thanks for those who share your word through, Je through the word and deed, including East Chain, Lutheran in Blue Earth, First Lutheran in Red Wing, Meadow Lutheran in Mapleton, and Fountain Lutheran in Fountain. Lord, in your mercy, comfort the family of Gary Salisbury as they mourn the loss of Gary. Bring them comfort and peace, Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen this community of faith. Plant and make grow in it the desire to share the gospel in word and action. Sustain in us the gift of baptism until we gather around your throne with all your saints from every time and place. Lord, in your mercy. Enter your loving hands, gracious God. We place ourselves in all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand for God's benediction. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and grants you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning's sending song is in the ELW 551, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve.
serve the Lord.